When it comes to boxing history, I've always been intrigued and enamored with the evolution of the equipment side of the sport. So let's start with one of the most common pieces of training equipment, and that is the heavy bag. Although the United States of, uh, Office of Patents and Trademarks awarded a patent for the punching bag to Simon D. Kehoe in 1872, we really didn't see what we would consider a modern day heavy bag in use until around the time of Gentleman Jim Corbett and later Jack Dempsey. Oddly enough, Corbett was called the father of modern boxing because of his scientific approach and his specific technique, so it's not surprising that he would be considered one of the early adopters of the use of a heavy bag. In any case, the most common heavy bags were typically constructed of canvas or leather due to the durability of those fabrics, and they would have initially been filled with sand, grains, or even sawdust in some cases. From the onset, it was mostly about using readily available materials that provided weight, uh, somewhat simulated a lifelike feel, and could be used to replicate a realistic fighting experience. Over the years, heavy bags have advanced in some in design with use of high-end leather and advanced synthetic materials that are now more readily available. Most contain a foam liner and shredded fabrics that are better for your hands and provide more shock absorption, so they've definitely improved in terms of functionality. On a side note, I have to touch on my personal favorite from the past, and that is a type of heavy bag called the maze bag. The maze bag first originated in the early 1900s. They were constructed of canvas sacks that were specifically filled with corn. That's why they were called maze bags. What differentiated this bag from the others was its very unique feel and the way it moved. At that time, fighters used this bag because of the canvas shell it was soft and it allowed them to feel the contents of the bag. The corn inside also moved and absorbed and formed around each punch. So it was similar to, you know, running on the beach. The maze bag provided a very lifelike experience and allowed the fighter to really sink each punch into the bag. The good news is we haven't lost this tremendous training tool, but have reproduced and reintroduced it as a title boxing innovation. Our version has a more durable, supple, genuine leather shell and contains small plastic acrylic beads. They act as the corn and they replicate the same feel and movement as a person. We've used more modern technology and recreated the most innovative modern spin on old school principles that you could ever imagine. Another piece of equipment that has stood the test of time are the punch mitts. The use of punch mitts or focus pads as some people call them likely came about as Muay Thai and Asian martial arts made its way into the United States in the late 1700s. The first concept began actually began with martial artists using foot tongs or slippers on their hands to absorb the impact from kicks and strikes. The earliest photos of or documentation of actual modern day punch mitts came about around the time of Joe Lewis and Rocky Marciano. These were these back then they were more rudimentary designs and didn't play as large a role in training as they do today. But our contemporary punch mitts came into more widespread use in the mid 1960s when Bruce Lee was seen using them in his training routines which that reinforces the Asian influence I mentioned. The mitts he used looked a lot like these retro old school punch mitts we just came out with recently. Very similar in design and, and feel. In any case, punch mitts weren't used as much at all, and certainly not to the extent they are now, until the late 70s or early 80s when legendary trainer Emmanuel Stewart was seen using punch mitts with many of his cronk fighters. So I suspect that he might have played a crucial role in ushering them into the modern day era. With that, I have an interesting story to share about their prominent position in the sport today. In the early 2000s, 2000s I spent some time in Sugar Ray Leonard's Nevada Partners Boxing Gym in Las Vegas. And the Mayweather's trained there at the time, and after doing a photo shoot with Floyd, I became familiar with the, May the Mayweather crew. Roger had a unique approach to mitt work, which quickly caught my eye, so I approached him about getting it on tape to share it with other coaches. Um, surprisingly enough, he, he's really open and willing to pass on this unique approach to mitt work. Um, I was working for a different boxing company at the time, but brought in a fighter he and I were both familiar with, that she was familiar with the routine. She was a young, upcoming female sensation named Melinda Cooper. And from there, with a simple handheld camcorder, we created a VHS tape series called Mastering the Mitts with Roger Mayweather. If I remember right, there were three tapes. There was a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. It was also cool because we included Roger's cheat sheet in each tape case. Um, at that time, he had a series of combinations. I think there were three columns written out on a sheet of paper, and he carried that in his pocket. 
Um, we actually Xeroxed his exact notes and included them with each, each tape we sold. And then after that, we, we put on some live public displays at, at a couple of events like uh, the Las Vegas Golden Gloves and Silver Gloves tournaments. And you can only imagine people's response because this was so different and new at the time. You know, I, I mean, I, I never even thought it would revolutionize the approach to mitt training or have the impact it has had on the industry today. We were just working on, you know, cool information to share with the boxing world. But now there are thousands of coaches mimicking his routine and creating their own versions of his approach. So his influence has undoubtedly had a tremendous impact on, on mitt training. But anyway, that, just a sidebar, back to, to punch mitts themselves. Uh, around 1990 or 2000, we started to see them evolve from just your standard flat target. And that's when the curved panther style mitts came out. Which, and they make total sense because they fit the natural shape of a person's hand more anatomically correct. And they would look some, something like these. Still wildly popular today, just because of the fit and feel and they're, they're such a natural design. Around the same time, the palm ball inside the hand compartment was also added to many mitt designs. Again, to make, make it more comfortable and, and fit in your hand more naturally. From that innovation, all sorts of varieties and de designs started being introduced. Smaller micro mitts like these became popular, especially for maximizing speed and combination punches. Um, mitts with air pockets were created to minimize impact and absorb heavier shots. And the equipment industry for the first time really began focusing on not just on the safety of the athlete, but for coaches as well. And this is mostly because as mitts became more and more a centerpiece of a fighter's training routine, the physical demands on the coaches increased. The wear and tear from holding mitts for an extended amount of time required punch mitt designs to evolve, improve, and progress. So today we're using some of the most impact absorbing foams, technologically advanced designs, and revolutionary materials the best we can so we can keep coaches in the game longer. You know, we have things like gel, um, matrix grid foam, memory foam, all kinds of other varieties in the works. So those are just two major innovations throughout the history of boxing equipment that show that the best way to keep improving is when you take your time to learn from our past and strive to be better for it. That's that. Thanks for joining. Thank you for watching this episode of Title Unboxed. If you're anything like me, you can never get too much boxing. So if you'd like to watch more episodes, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our Title Boxing YouTube page.